Well, hey, church, thanks so much for joining us online for worship today. We pray that during this season that you will continue to stay connected and progress through the Word. So we'll be posting messages on Facebook and on YouTube every week. And you may even see some other content that gets sprinkled in there. So make sure to like and follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel um, so that you can stay up to date on everything that's going on. Now, this is not normal. It's not normal for you to be watching me on a screen. And it's far from normal for me to preach to an empty room. I do way better when I get some feedback from you guys. So I'm just going to ask that you give me the feedback, even though I won't be able to see or hear you. Um, because this isn't normal. Actually, right now, there's very little that is still normal. Many of you are working from home. A lot of you are also facilitating your kids' education for the last week, and you're grateful that it's spring break um, so that you can get a break already. This isn't normal. If you've been to a grocery store, you'll see aisles that are normally full of produce and other things that are empty. You've seen people panicked. And you've seen other people just trying to do anything they can to do anything they can to be prepared for the uncertainty. See, there is some uncertainty. And there are some many things that we don't yet know. But God does. And in the midst of days that are far from normal, God is doing something, I believe, that's not normal. Monday morning, I sat down with a staff, and the question that I asked them was, what is essential? In, in, in seasons where we can't gather as a church and, and small groups even aren't going to function like they normally do, what is essential? Because I believe that that's what God is calling us back to right now. My friend Carl Vaders, he made a pretty simple list of what's essential to the church. He says, people who genuinely love God, people who genuinely love each other, and people who share the good news of Jesus. Now, that's not a new list. Essential things rarely are. They're, they're not new. They're rediscovered. You see, those three things are seen in the teachings of Jesus. I think you see most of them in the book of Matthew, um, specifically chapter 22, where Jesus has an encounter with two different religious groups. The first was the Sadducees, and they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead, so they created this scenario where a woman's husband dies, and in that culture, if your husband died before you had an heir, you would then marry his brother. So in the scenario that they concocted, which was pretty absurd, this woman ends up marrying all of the brothers who all die before she does, and they ask Jesus, in heaven, whose wife would she be? Jesus doesn't even answer their question and instead says, you don't know the scriptures and you don't understand the power of God. But then he has this interaction with a group called the Pharisees, and they wanted to pin him down about some specifics of the law because they saw themselves as the experts and the keepers of the law. And here's how that exchange goes in Matthew 22, starting in verse 34. It says, When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? He said to him, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. So those first two things on the list, people who genuinely love God, they do it with all of their heart, with all of their soul, and with all their mind. And people who genuinely love each other. Jesus says that it's loving your neighbor the way you would love yourself. And then later in Matthew 28, Jesus says this, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. That list of essentials, it's right there in the teachings of Jesus were to be people who genuinely love God, people who genuinely love each other, and people who share the good news of the love of Jesus. You see, church, regardless of whether we're able to gather, we can be that. The church around the world is growing, even exploding in places, hostile places, places where they can't gather in large groups. They can't loudly sing worship songs and a preacher can't get up in front of hundreds of people and boldly proclaim the truth of Scripture. But in those hostile environments, the essential church, those is still the church. 
Now, I don't know how long this pandemic will last. To be honest, I don't know for sure when we will gather together publicly again. So in this season, I believe that rather than just longing for the normal, we should rediscover the essential. We should go back to that. Because one day soon, we're going to gather together again. And many of you are going to enjoy, enjoy a firm handshake and a warm hug from a friend you haven't seen in a couple of weeks. We're going to all enjoy the, the encouragement of the assembly of that many people in a room together who all agree about Jesus. We're going to experience the, the challenge and the comfort that comes from the teaching of Scripture. But for now, God is doing something different. I hope you believe that. I hope you believe that in this season, God may very well be purifying our motives and clarifying the callings on our life. That he's reminding us as parents that we are the people who are primarily responsible for discipling our children and even their education. That all of us can't be dependent on a preacher to be our only source of spiritual nourishment. That we need to open our Bibles. We need to read them. We need to meditate on them. And we need to let the Holy Spirit guide us into truth because that's what he promises to do. So when things do get back to normal, in some ways I hope they never do. I hope we don't go back to just going through the motions. I hope we don't go back to taking the assembly and the gathering and our groups and all of the ministries and the opportunities to serve. I hope we don't take those for granted. I pray that as parents, we never go back to just depending on children's and student ministry to disciple our kids, but instead we see them for what they truly are. They are partners in the mission of raising kids who love Jesus and love his church and will give their life to him. That we will see it as opportunities to put our kids in environments where there are dozens of other adults who love Jesus and who love them and are on the same page as we are. I pray that during this time we will develop a fresh passion for personal discipleship, that we will open our Bibles and that we will read and let God teach us, that we will not only share the gospel, but we'll complete the Great Commission by gathering in groups and, and teaching new believers to obey everything Jesus commanded. Now, these may seem like difficult and dark times, but it's in these moments that the light shines the brightest. We were made for this. This is a moment designed for the church to be the church. We, we, can, we can be hope in the hopelessness. We can be calm in the midst of chaos, and we can be light in the dark. In Matthew 5, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. At some point, things will get back to more normal. But in the meantime, let's make the most of the meantime. Let's get into our Bibles and let's get filled with the Spirit so that the fruit of the Spirit can be seen in us and not the spirit of the age, a spirit of fear and anxiety and panic. But instead... We can live out calm, restful confidence in Jesus Christ and who he is and what he's done for us. Let's love our families and make the most of this time that we have. Let's love and look out for our neighbors. As needs arise that you can meet, do it. And if you see a need that's too big for you, give us a call. Reach out to us. We would love to partner together to meet the needs as they arise in our community. Let's shine our light. Let's be the church in this time. Because how we respond as Christians says everything about where our hope and trust is. How we respond right now is painting a picture for the world to see of who Jesus is and what he has done. So let's live in such a way that our light shines. That they see our good works and they give glory to God. I love you, church. I'm thankful for you and grateful to be your pastor. We are praying for you in this time that God would keep your hearts close to him 
that we would grow in our trust of him. And I'm praying that during this time, rather than just hoping everything would get back to normal, that we would be reminded of what's essential. God, make us people who love you with all of our heart, soul, and mind. That we love each other genuinely and that we share the good news to a world that so desperately needs it. So right now, wherever you are, if you're on your phone, on your computer, on the TV in your living room, if it's Sunday morning or maybe it's afternoon or evening, would you join me in this prayer? Father, do your work. We believe that you know what's going on, that you care, that you are aware. And God, I believe that you are doing something new in this season, that these moments don't have to be wasted, that you would remind us of what really matters, that we would come back to you, that we would come back to your word. Father, that we would come out of this stronger in our faith, stronger in our love for you and for each other. Father, that when we gather again, Father, it would be a time filled with joy and celebration of your goodness to us. God, we pray for those who are right now battling this virus, whether personally because of an infection or whether they are helping to lead the response and the recovery. We pray for our community. We pray for our local leaders. God, work in them and through them. And God, let us be a light that the world can see you in this time. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, church. We'll see you again soon.